So the last kind of suturing I'll show uh, is the running subcuticula. This is what you'll use most frequently in closing surgical incisions. So I'd practice this quite a bit. So your first move is just to grab some of that dermis for an anchoring stitch. So just grab something deep up near the top of the incision. Go ahead and tie that down. For this you'll most frequently be using a monocryl. 4-0 monocryl is the standard. Cut nice and short. You're going to be leaving that behind. You don't want too much foreign material in the incision. Reload away from you. Grabbing the skin edge, going in the dermal layer, then right out the apex of the incision at the dermal epidermal junction. In this case, the transition from kind of a deeper, deeper pink to a lighter pink. Okay. Now load the needle towards yourself. Your first pass here, you're going to start right where, pretty much right where your incision comes out, right at the dermal epidermal junction, moving the skin coming out right at the dermal epidermal junction. Reloading. Your next, look where your suture comes out and kind of stretch it across the incision, a little stepped back from that. In the dermal epidermal junction, coming out right at that same level. Pulling through, pulling tight. Going in that D junction, making sure when you kind of look across that you're coming in and out at the same level. Um, that can really make a difference because when you aren't, there can be sort of a step or a ledge. As you can imagine, if you pull things together that aren't at the same level, then one skin edge gets proud relative to the other, and that can uh, make for an ugly incision. No one likes that. So if you do, on accident, go a little deep or a little shallow, um, make sure you just complement it on the other side. Uh, in longer incisions, when you're using monocryl, uh, you can sometimes take two or three bites and then pull tight, but it is best practice uh, particularly uh, if you're using brands that are not monochrome, that will break if you put too much effort on it. Uh, so pulling taut after each pass is essential in that condition. So as you're nearing the end, taking smaller bites. One last stitch here at the skin edge, going out through the apex of the incision. And then, going almost all the way through, now you're going to get another bite of that dermis. Much as you did right at the beginning. Again, you're trying to hide a knot. So, there's a little hitch you tie here, putting your fingers through your loop, grabbing that free end, and pulling through, kind of rotating the suture, okay? Fingers through the loop, grabbing that free end, rotating. This second knot here is where you can really sort of tighten and then the third knot locks it. Okay. Now pull the needle through first then let the knot tighten. Because if the needle hooks on the other side you end up flailing around a bit and, uh, and it looks, looks silly. Okay. Now that you have your knot tied reload your needle one more time Pull up on the suture end, diving down, coming out anywhere on the skin. Grabbing the needle, pulling through, then just cut the suture flesh with the skin. Okay. All right. There you have your running subcuticular, your skin closed, no suture to remove, and typically a pretty cosmetic skin closure.